Groups that oppose tort reform legislation in Wisconsin say it will literally let people get away with murder. They claim it would be practically impossible to take businesses, health care providers, and even drunk drivers to civil court. Uh, this also uh, changes uh, the strict liability rules uh, for punitive damages in a way that you have to actually demonstrate that there is intent to injure a specific person. We are concerned about the impossibly high standard proposed for obtaining punitive damages for offending parties, and we are especially concerned about the decriminalization of abuse. That lawyer went on to talk about Angelica Arndt, the seven-year-old girl who died in a Rice Lake daycare in 2006. She was being punished for blowing bubbles in her milk. An adult sat on her for over an hour while three other adults held her down against a concrete floor. That little girl died because she suffocated. And with this legislation, that kind of criminal negligence goes off scot-free. There's no punishment for people who do things like that. Citizen Action of Wisconsin brought in a man whose pregnant daughter was killed by a three-time drunk driver. This bill, <coughs> as I read it, would seem to make it virtually impossible to obtain uh, damages. What this bill may actually do, if you look at it, is say that they have to intend to hurt that individual to get punitive damages. And so if they didn't int intend to hurt that person, then they, there may, may be no punitive damages, and there's no real punishment, no accountability. That's certainly not the case. Neither the governor nor the uh, sponsors of the bill in the legislature have any intention of weakening the provisions as they relate to drunk drivers. We're going to make sure that's in there. There's a specific provision in the bill to address that right now, and we're going to make sure that's as tight as it can be. Senator Zipperer, who co-authored the Senate bill, says many other states already have similar laws on their books, and they are not having the kinds of problems his opponents are warning will happen in Wisconsin. Uh, what we're going is making a number of changes that are going to bring Wisconsin in line in these areas that we're looking at with the rules that are in existence in other states. This is not uh, a change that's not seen in other places. This is bringing Wisconsin in line with what's going on in most of the rest of the country. Many people opposed to tort reform don't see what it has to do with jobs. When do we need the jobs? We need them right now. And not only do we need these jobs, we need good jobs, good paying jobs, where we can live and take care of our families. And we want Scott Walker to know that we will not back down until this is done. He can do anything else that he wants to do, but we want him to make jobs a priority right. for the people in this state. But Governor Walker and his legislative allies argue tort reform is an essential component to improve Wisconsin's jobs climate. When businesses look around, one of the things that they look at is each state's legal climate. When they see in a number of areas where Wisconsin is the only state with a specific provision uh, after the ruling in the lead paint case, where we're the only state with that provision on the books, that scares off those businesses. They don't know what's going to happen to them in the courts. So they decide if, if you, know, you have a choice of where you're going to put your capital and where you're going to put your investment, they take a look at that and they say, Maybe we would be better off investing someplace else that doesn't have some of these rules on the books, someplace with more mainstream rules that are in line with other states, and we have some predictability of where we're going to go. This is important about in, in order to attract businesses and capital to our state that will bring jobs here, is to just say, we're going to be where other states generally are, and that's what this bill does. The governor's lawsuit reform proposals were the topic of a public hearing in the Capitol on Tuesday, where opponents and supporters made their case. The legislature could vote on the proposals as early as next week. For the McGyver Institute, I'm Bill Osmolsky.